Hey all you cool cats and kittens. I'd like to take a quick moment out of everyone's quarantine to discuss the show Tiger King. You may have heard of it. I originally planned on creating a long and detailed video, deep diving into the series and the individuals highlighted. And after weeks of research, taking notes, losing my mind, suffering several massive headaches and one good old fashioned mental breakdown, I decided to keep this video relatively brief. I won't go into detail about Joe Exotic's obsession with controlling everyone and everything in his life. I won't tell you whether or not I think Carol Baskin definitely murdered her husband. I won't give you my opinions on Doc Antle's spooky scary sex cult. And I won't even touch the fact that I would sleep much better at night if I knew that Jeff Lowe was in a maximum security prison on the moon where he would have no contact with any other human being or living creature for the rest of his life. I'm in no position to speak on such matters, so I'll keep those opinions to myself. I'm here to talk about the aspect of this series that tends to be overlooked. The conversation around animal welfare and wildlife ownership. The reality is that this series barely scrapes the surface of how complex the issue of exotic animal ownership really is by showing you only the extreme ends of the spectrum. It's a pretty unique show in the sense that there is no one to root for. Joe Exotic is not the good guy. Carol Baskin is not the good guy. The GW Zoo is not the good guy. And PETA is not the good guy. This show has no heroes and villains. There's no antagonist or protagonist. There's no overarching supervillain, except for Jeff Lowe. You have to remember that while some aspects of this series were dramatized for entertainment purposes, it's still a real story and these are real events, despite a lot of lying and he said, she said, and stretching of the truth. Um, the reality is that we'll most likely never know every detail of the lives of Joe Exotic and Carol Baskin, and frankly, I don't think I want to know every detail. And beyond that, the world will more than likely forget about this show in a couple of weeks and just move on with their lives. But I am begging everyone who watches this show to keep two things in mind. Number one, Joe Exotic does not represent the core values of zookeeping. And number two, Carol Baskin does not represent the core values of animal welfare. Both of these people probably do love tigers in their own twisted way. Or at least they did at one point or another. But just because you love an animal doesn't mean that your actions don't have a directly negative impact on them. And that's especially the case when your ego is so overinflated that almost every personal, professional, and financial decision that you make is more centered around gaining attention rather than improving the lives of the animals in your care. I'm speaking as someone whose number one priority in life is to see a world where humankind can learn to respect wildlife in all its forms, maintain a balanced ecosystem alongside human progress. I believe that ethically operated and accredited zoos are an essential part of wildlife conservation. But breeding hundreds of big cats under the conditions shown in this docu-series for no purpose beyond profit, entertainment, and ego is not ethical. But take comfort in knowing that there is a beautiful gray area between animal rights idealism and animal exploitation. This gray area is a marriage of public education, conservation through carefully controlled captive breeding, fundraising for habitat restoration, and animal welfare under human care. Unfortunately, this gray area just isn't sexy enough to turn into a binge-worthy documentary series on Netflix. But it's important to remember that, at its core, Tiger King is a true crime show, not an animal show. And the eccentric personalities on screen consistently overshadow the real victims of the story. The hundreds of tigers and other animals that were bred, inbred, and hybridized for the sole purpose of inflating a false sense of importance in the people that own them. So now I'm going to ask a favor. As soon as public health officials deem it safe to go back out into the world and interact with other human beings, click the link in the description of this video and find an AZA accredited zoo near you. Visit that zoo, ask a keeper about how your favorite species is cared for and the enrichment used, what they're fed, the space they have, and how they're utilizing it, and find out how real captive conservation and animal welfare works. If you want to hear a more in-depth conversation about animal welfare in the Tiger King, I highly recommend listening to episode 151 of the All Creatures podcast. I'll leave a link to that down in the description as well. I know I talked a lot about ego in this video, and before anyone says it, I do understand the irony of a YouTuber judging others for being too concerned with public opinion. But I'm no hypocrite. There's no place for ego here at Miller's Wildlife, and frankly, I'm offended that you would call me an attention seeker for any reason.
It's good Kool-Aid. Share your thoughts on the Tiger King in the comments section. I'd love to see an in-depth discussion about this show, and all I ask is that everybody please be kind and respectful to one another if any disagreements pop up. Also, let me know if there are any other wildlife-related topics that you believe deserve more public attention, and I'll do my best to give a voice to those issues. Thanks for watching. Stay safe, stay healthy, and whenever you get a chance, go for a walk outside in nature. It really, really helps during these weird and stressful times. Carol definitely killed her husband, though.